Today we're working with Wade and with Alan, our contractor, to discuss how the lift will operate. Uh, this operates like an elevator and I'm going to turn it over to Wade here in a little bit and let him share with us uh, about the operation of this Bruno lift. And everybody, Alan and Wade and their company and Ken Harmon has done an incredible job with this installation. Presently, I have the keys in my pocket, so the keys have been turned to the on position. There are three positions that we'll show here in a minute, but Wade's going to demonstrate uh, using the switch on the outside of the uh, lift, uh, the lift coming down, and how this will work. The door that is on the front remains secure until it is down. It will automatically open on the low side and then after a, an appropriate number of seconds uh, the door will then close. If for any reason somebody needs extra time, simply bumping the door will keep the door open. Would you like me to show that? And now we'll open back up. Wade is going to be our guinea pig and demonstrate that the door will not close as long as somebody is uh, waiting, needs a little extra time, and then the door will close. So, so once this happens, once you have it to where it goes into that, it will automatically close after the first time. So, then, you, then um, I'm going to step in. And there is a switch that Wade is operating, and he's going to stop for a second. You, if one releases the switch, it will not allow the door to open in uh, mid-flight, and the lift will simply stop. So one has to hold the switch down in order for it to come to a full stop. Stop for a second. Stop video a second. Can you stop video a second? All right, cool. Alan, we come over and press that on the bottom down here. See that little silver lever on the very bottom of the unit? Will you push up on that? Yes. Yeah. Okay, there we go. All right, let go. That's actually a safety for the door, that is. So when the door comes down uh, and it comes up, it latches. But when we come down, it releases that safety. And if we can go, then the door can open and close. So there's many safety devices and switches on this unit. So. Excellent. There are three sets of keys. One for the switch here on the outside. One in the car itself. One here in the uh, position upstairs. And the beauty of this is, is the keys do not have to be in as long as all three switches are in the on position. Any one of those switches, if it is turned off under that cap, will result in the lift not operating. The door here at the top is simply a manual open and a manual close with a magnet. Right now, as I move forward, again, as one of the safeties, that door will not open so that I don't step off into open space. We also have left the Allen wrenches 
the Allen uh, or the uh, bolts at the top loosened, that cap will come off at the top and there is a wheel, a manual wheel, and that is going to be stored, at least for the time being, over here in the lectern table here in the narthex. And if it's ever needed, that wheel, which is sitting right there, will allow for the car to be manually lifted up or down if there is a problem either with the battery or power supply. As far as the cover, the cover uh, is to remain on. There is a safety that if that cover, top cover is not on, uh, the lift will not operate. So Alan has asked me, uh, do the lights mean the uh, unit is charging? And I said, yes, you see a red light meaning that there's power going to the battery charger. And the amber light means that it's charging. That amber light will eventually turn green. Uh, and that means the batteries are fully charged. The battery is an automatic charger. It senses voltage, so it will shut off. And then when you use the unit again, it turns back on to create a charge back into the batteries. What's the life of a battery? So these batteries should last somewhere between two and four years. I have seen them last much longer. But as long as there, is no, there are no issues with power being off or things like that, the batteries will work. When the, if the power does go away when you're in, the, in, in church or something and you need to use the unit, you can use it five or six times on the batteries, and then they'll recharge when the power comes back on. Is there, that are those lithium batteries? Uh, no, they're they are not lithium batteries. They're regular uh, lead acid sealed batteries. So there are no fumes or anything coming out of it. So they're sealed. And is there indication that tells you that the battery is? cannot charge. So um, sometimes there will be an indication. Um, the battery will, you will see the light turn green on, stay green all the time no matter what you try to use it. The unit will not work so therefore the batteries are probably bad if that light stays green okay. all the time immediately. Okay. Uh, you should always, when you use it, you should always see an amber light come on. Very good. So it's in the dark, so so I press up uh, lights come on. Lights left and right, up and down switch, the emergency stop, and then the cap is over the key and it's in the on position sideways. Very straightforward. Now is that button over there the only one that will make the door open? Mm -hmm. If it's, if it's down, all of them will make the door open. If the unit is down okay. in the lower position, all of them will make the door open. So you can press that switch, watch your arm. So press this switch, door opens. Okay. They're all connected. All right, so based upon that, it also means conceivably one could step up and actually be not on the lift, but on the upside operating the lift going up and down. Open That's the helpful door. to know. Excellent. And Alan is up on the upside and has done just that very thing. Hit the switch, the door will open. So any of the three switches will enable the door to open in the down position. Once it's fully in the up position, Alan can manually open the upper door. And again, the ramp goes down. 
and now the door is able to open.